You, you are scaring your young and interminable audience. Logan Paul just made a response video to part two of the Shane Dawson, Jake Paul documentary series. And Logan is pretty, pretty concerned about the youth of America. So let's talk about this. What is up everybody? This is Chris from The Rewired Soul where we talk about the problem but focus on the solution. And if you're new to my channel, my channel is all about mental health. It's mostly trying to help you improve your mental health and educate people and decrease the stigma and increase awareness and all that kind of stuff. And what I like to do, I like to pull from things going on in the YouTube community or pop culture to try to complete that mission. So if you're into that kind of stuff, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell because I make a ton of videos. Don't believe me? This is my second video today. So uh, this video was actually um, recommended to me by one of my buddies who is a fellow YouTuber. Uh, her channel is Positively Udo. Go check it out, she does some awesome stuff. But she was like, yo, why don't you make a video about the Logan Paul response? So I just sat down and watched it with my girlfriend. I was like, yep, we need to talk about this. So. Before I get started, okay, because there's actually some things that I agree with Logan Paul on, but by no means do I enjoy Logan Paul. I don't think he's a good influence and creator and all that kind of stuff. So to get this out of the way, let's talk about Logan Paul's very hypocritical video that he just made. So first off, Logan's main concern with this is that Shane has such a young, impressionable audience and I just couldn't help but pause the video and laugh out loud. Like Logan Paul calling somebody out for putting something that might affect a young, impressionable audience is laughable based on this guy's history. But when I'm watching this series, there's just a few things that I thought I, I I was trying to stay out of it, but I, I want, I need to address them. Because Shane, the people who are watching this, your young and impregnable audience. No, that's wrong. <laughs> your young and impenetrable audience. Also your young and impressionable audience Fantastic. will not know any better. So I'm here to cut the shit. Three, two, one. what his entire channel is about. Like that made me laugh out loud. Second one is like, it's very hypocritical of Logan to and to dedicate an entire section of like how Shane, you know, mistook Logan Paul and Jake Paul and then calls Shane a liar and all this other stuff where right here in this clip, you see Logan does the same thing. Some of the biggest businessmen in the world could be considered sociopathic, uh, Mark Jobs. Nope, Steve Zuckerberg. <laughs> Logan, I hate to break it to you, but it was done for comedic purposes, just like you did. All right, so I just wanted to call out Logan's hypocrisies real quick, but now let's move on. So anyways, basically what Logan's saying, the, the, the gist of his video is that <laughs> after the foolery that he did, for his young impressionable audience, back in Japan, he started looking up sociopaths and psychopaths and things like that because his friends and stuff were commenting. So the other knock I'll make real quick on Logan Paul is, Logan Paul's coming to the forefront like he is some type of mental health professional. He's not. like. To give Shane credit, at least he sat down with a licensed therapist, you know, and Shane also talked about how he talked with a uh, psychiatrist and things like that. But anyways, like, so take what you will from Logan's, you know, video. Now, me, but I also let you guys know, like, me, like, I'm not like a psychiatrist or anything like that. I'm just educated about mental health, my personal experience, working as a mental health professional and all that kind of stuff. All right, so I just want you to realize that when Logan's sharing his views on these things. So he did his own personal research. He talked to friends about it and stuff. But basically, what Logan says is this. Again, before I say anything, guys, I uh, DM'd Shane about this. I gave him my opinions because I it's... Quite simply, it is not black and white. 99% of the time, someone is not a sociopath or not a sociopath. My opinion is there's a sociopathic spectrum at which point some people lie higher on it than others. And yes, this is actually correct. This is one of the reasons why the very first 
uh, video I made after the dark uh, side of Jake Paul, the very first video I made was like, yo, okay, I'm glad that people are being educated about this and there's some awareness, but don't run around diagnosing yourself as a sociopath or other people as a sociopath. Because what happens is, and this is just one of my fears, is that, a lot of people will have sociopathic tendencies. And when I saw Logan Paul make that comment, I was like, all right, Logan Paul is definitely subscribed to The Rewired Soul. He's definitely watching my videos. <laughs> that was a joke, calm down. But anyways, he's he's correct in that aspect. And you know, that's, that's the thing, is that there are people who run around, and this is one of the issues, like especially in the last, I don't know, few days since that video was posted, like you just see constantly people throwing out the words sociopath and psychopath all willy-nilly, and like, it's just something that I've talked about on my channel before because I'm a mental health advocate. Again, I'm trying to decrease the stigma. And like people throw around words um, that have to do with mental illness, like just all left and right. And the only issue I take with that is that it kind of dilutes the seriousness of mental illness and things. Like the example that I often give is like, you know, maybe maybe somebody goes to like, I don't know, their favorite restaurant and something's off the menu and they say, oh my God, I'm so depressed about this. Like when you keep using words like depressed constantly when you're actually sad, when somebody actually is experiencing depression, like their, their issues don't seem as, as uh, you know, as big as they should be considered because so many people are just using these words all the time. So that's one of the things I'm concerned about with everybody running around talking about sociopaths and psychopaths. It's the same thing when it comes to narcissists and bipolar, like people just throw this stuff around. So I think it is important that we, that we realize that some people might have sociopathic tendencies, especially in certain aspects of their life, that does not make them a sociopath. And we still have, I don't know what, like six more episodes of this Shane Dawson series, and he has talked about how he is going to try to do a better job with the way he edits and the information, like now that he sees that some people are taking offense to these things. So like, I hope at some point he kind of discusses that. Now, one of the things that I am very grateful for, again, is that this is becoming a topic of conversation. And I am going to link a video to Shane Dawson's Snapchat story, but here's a clip from it real quick. If you're in a friendship that's toxic or a relationship that's toxic and they're showing all of the signs not just one of them all of them if they've been doing dangerous things that are putting you in harm's way if they seem like they don't really care if they're doing things like that you need to realize it and get away from it or realize it and accept it and know that that's what that is i'm going to keep it real i probably have sociopaths still in my life i'm not cutting them out but knowing all of this information has changed my life. The way I interact with people now, now that I've spent the last two months fully falling down the hole and researching and talking to professionals, I feel so much better. I don't answer texts from people who I think might be using me or might might be that. Now, this is something that's very important. This is why I make videos about things going on in the YouTube community, because there's so many things that you can learn from this. So what Shane's talking about is he's starting to recognize and notice that people in his life have sociopathic tendencies. For example, trying to just take, 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 using somebody to suit their needs. And this is something that all of us need to start to acknowledge. While that person in your life may not be a sociopath, path or they may not be a diagnosable narcissist you need to recognize those those tendencies because if we don't we start getting into toxic relationships whether that's with significant others or the friends you keep in your life or even toxic family members so something that i share as part of my story is back in my addiction days over six years ago i only kept people around if I can get something from them, right? So I kept around friends who had money, kept around friends who had substances or alcohol or things like that, or I kept around uh, women. I would only date women if I can get something from them. Like I specifically remember dating a, a woman when I was unemployed because she was financially secure, all right? But something I realized in my sobriety and my journey of becoming a better person was, if I'm constantly keeping people around just so I can take something from them, I'm also keeping people around who are only there to take things from me. So I was being a gigantic hypocrite. So today I set clear boundaries with people. Like, trust me, like I am known as the mental health guy or the addiction guy with 
people I've known for years, and there are people who only message me, they only message me, never to ask me how I'm doing, they only message me when they're going through some kind of mental health crisis. And it's important that we recognize this kind of stuff and we start to set up different boundaries with them. So I am glad that Shane's kind of acknowledging this, and this is just the thing I'm curious about through Shane's experience with this entire thing. Like, is he just, is he overreaching? Is he thinking that he's just surrounded by sociopaths? Or is he starting to realize that maybe he's surrounded by different social climbers and people who are trying to use him and people who aren't legitimate friends? And it's a question that we all need to ask ourselves. Like, something that you should be doing regularly is auditing your circle of friends and family members. Who are you keeping around in your life? Like me, I, I as, as friendly as I am and as outgoing as I am and all that kind of stuff, I only keep about four people like really close to me in my life. Like there's my girlfriend, you know, there's uh, my best friend in California and I have a couple other very close friends who I have like regular normal conversations with. But a lot of people in my life like, they use me or you know whatever it is and it's just like okay no like here's a boundary like that doesn't mean i turn my back on them like when people come to me and they say yo and they only come to me because yo like my mom you know is an alcoholic or my cousin needs help like i don't turn my back on them but i know i see that person and they're kind of in a in a category in my mental list of like you're somebody who only reaches out when you need something you know what i mean so i hope that shane's quote unquote young impressionable audience is learning from his experience to kind of just start auditing your your friend circle and real quick let's do this because i was just talking with my girlfriend about this i want to have this done in the comments comments below. If you're a Shane Dawson fan and you happen to watch this video, how old are you? Okay, because when I first started watching Shane Dawson was with my son who's nine and it was when Shane Dawson was like doing like life hacks and like eating insane foods and stuff like that. And like over the past year with like Shane's like maturity of his channel and the documentary series, like I don't think that Shane's audience is like nine, 10, 12 year olds, like a great example is my son right over there. My son has not watched Shane in so long because Shane doesn't do those videos anymore. So do me a favor for my own personal research, leave a comment down below and let me know how old you are if you watch Shane, if you don't mind sharing that information. All right, but I would also like to know your thoughts on the Logan Paul video and response and the whole Shane Dawson series. So let's just have a conversation in the comments down below. All right, so that's all I got for you. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and if you're new, again, I am always making videos to help you out with your mental and emotional well-being. Make sure you subscribe, ring that notification bell, and I wanna send a huge thank you to everybody supporting the channel over on Patreon. You help me do something that I love, which is helping others with their mental health. If you wanna help support the channel for as little as a buck, go ahead and click on that Patreon icon right there, all right? Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.